What's up, everybody? Welcome to Tesla Fix. Today, we have a very special episode that I looked forward to because I have a person from Europe here, a small channel that is actually quite interesting, that also covers Tesla pretty thoroughly. And I want to talk with him about Europe, FSD in Europe, the Model 3 Highland that was coming out, and what's up with the arson attack on Giga Berlin. We're going to have a follow up about this as well. So, watching and let's see who it is. Welcome to Tesla Fix. Make sure to subscribe and like this episode. So Will, <laughs> aka Tesla Jigsaw, is here. Uh, hi, Will. Thanks for for being on. I'm really looking forward to this. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 super excited uh, to do this. And um, yeah, I, I like your channel. And to everybody, please check check out this channel. But uh, maybe Will, you want to tell the audience here uh, what you're up to, what you are doing, and then we can jump into the European topics for the American audience here that is watching. <laughs> okay, well, thanks very much for having me. It's nice to be on here. I see you've had some like really big names on this channel, so it's quite weird that you've got a pillar like me about to you know, come and <laughs> jump on board. But uh, yeah, very pleased to be and, uh, you know, Like yourself, I'm a bit of a Tesla addict. I just, uh, you know, I'm addicted to the story and the drama of Tesla every day just because it's fun and exciting, isn't it? Isn't it? It's not just amazing products. The whole sort of story behind Tesla is just, you know, incredible to watch it explode into the future and uh, hopefully make our planet a bit of a better place, uh, much to the dislike of crazy environmentalist warriors and, uh, <laughs> and other things like that. Who burn so, down yeah. Uh, yeah, electrical just burn down out, out. Pylons randomly. What a pillux, honestly. Um, so, yeah, um, just let's, let's talk about some Tesla stuff. Yeah. So, uh, Will, you, you also live in Europe. Um, how surprised were you by the Model 3 refresh that we've seen? I think, personally, I liked it so much that I started to order one and I own one, actually. You've also tested the Model 3 Highland. So, what is your impression? Um, maybe you can tell the audience about your personal Tesla story. What do you, Have you driven one before? Do you own one? And also, how was it to test the Model 3 Highland? Um, of yeah, course, sure. many people exp will experience in, it in the US as well. But uh, yeah, I think it's a total game changer in comparison to the other ones. That's just my opinion. But please go on. I didn't want to. No, absolutely. I've had my um, my original Tesla Model 3 standard range for sort of four and a half years now. So that's a California made one. Woo! And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it just obviously changed my life. I mean, I got that car expecting it just to sort of be a nice electric car. But Obviously, the more you learn about Tesla, the more sort of addicted you get to the story. And, uh, you know, the, the the fact that that car has cost me a tenth of the cost to run than my previous petrol car, because unlike yourself, I, I'm privileged to have a driveway. So um, I can just charge it at night for, on a super oh, cheap you know, tariff. And it's like, you know, two pounds to, to fill it up to give it 200 miles. So it's, it's no you know, way. phenomenal. Well. So just the finances make such a lot of sense. I mean, I did do a video sort of explaining how I've saved 12,000 mm. pounds in four and a half years, mm. uh, just mm. in, in cost savings. Yeah. There's been nothing, nothing go wrong with it at all. It's had no service in. Well, I did do a, a brief service just last week to check the brakes and rotate the tires. That's the first time I've actually spent money on it. Um, yeah. So, you know, just the sheer cost of it and the, and the pleasure of driving it, um, you know, me and my wife are wedding musicians. So we drive around the UK, we go to weddings, um, and, you know, we can easily get to and from, you know, any wedding with ease. We don't need to charge anywhere because we sort of travel within a hundred mile radius of our home. Um, and yeah, and then the safety aspects of it, too. So um, about a year ago, um, it, we were just just pulling onto a motorway. And from the outside lane, a car came from nowhere and would have sideswiped into the side of our car. Um, but. But our Model 3 took over and just yanked me across to the left, which absolutely blew my mind at the time because I hadn't seen the car come in. And, you know, my two mm -hmm. little kids are in the back. And so then oh, it was just wow. another moment mm -hmm. of, oh, my goodness, you know, we were, you know, we were mm -hmm. creeping up to 70 mile an hour at the time. That would have been a horrific accident. We would have been mm -hmm. pit maneuvered and spun around yeah. and, you know, yeah. caught crash with lots of other cars involved. So I don't know, just at, at every moment, I'm just... I'm thankful I'm in a Tesla. And then then there's mm -hmm. the full effect of it as well. I mean, I've got the um, the original batteries in mind. They're not the LFPs, so they do have some of that naughty mm -hmm. cobalt and nickel in it. But it gives mm -hmm. you that extra oomph. So there really is a difference. This was my surprise when I did test drive the new Model 3 was ah, okay. with, the, um, with the LFP batteries. It's definitely noticeably slower off the mark, and it's just not quite got that punch that mine's got, which, which surprised me a bit. 
I mean, it's still really mm. fast, you know, for a car. It, it'll obviously wipe mm. the floor with most of the internal combustion engines. But, um, but it's yes, yeah, a surprise to get back into my older car and it just have that that bit mm. more punch. It, and it definitely does. And I want to do a naught to sixty in mine just to actually clarify mm. the difference because I think it's sub five seconds. Um, wow. Okay. My, my original standard range plus. When I when I've, I've test driven the um, the new Model Three. Uh, I saw your review of it actually really good nice thorough review I liked your walk around I mean you taught me things that yeah, I yeah, totally yeah. overlooked mm -hmm. I, I didn't know you Thanks. could work the the rear screen from the front screen which is mm -hmm. something you showed me so uh yeah yep. so that, that was really interesting but but I mean overall when yeah when I was test driving that car I just you know stuck a camera in the car and just recorded my reaction there was no script or anything I just I didn't mm -hmm. really know what I was going to say and I was just driving out the car park and it just blew my mind all of a sudden I'm like oh my goodness it's so quiet and refined mm -hmm. and yep. you know it's a real difference especially from coming from my original model three so yeah mine isn't the slightly upgraded one which did have you know double glazing didn't it and more soundproofing and uh soundproofing um so it was a real noticeable difference and and i think the you know obviously the interior styling and all the extra you know ventilated seats with screen and all that lot is just spot on and so is the exterior styling as well i just think it, it looks absolutely beautiful in 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 all colors and yeah i'm i'm blown away by it so um I, yeah so it, it was an interesting sort of um experiment i decided to to take the byd seal for a test drive the week after mm -hmm. just yep. to see what i thought of that so uh yeah we could get into that if you like yeah, uh, absolutely i think i think that's a perfect transition because when you look at the european market especially also in Germany. I don't know how it is in uh, the UK um, about this topic. Um, the, the competition from China, Tesla, what the stance is. But in Germany was kind of uh, really prevalent uh, or, or obvious um, that the German car manufacturers at the IAA in Munich, the International Auto Show in, in, in Munich, um, last year, they are scared now, really scared about the Chinese competitors because, um, I mean, they knew what was coming for them, more or less, but they had the biggest booth, BYD, or one of the mm. biggest booths, and uh, bigger even than VW, and, and that's something they, and the management magazines uh, wrote about that all day long, and um, yeah. it's kind of strange that Tesla is still so sandbagged in German media as well, because I think they have the better product, but Maybe you can talk about that pretty <laughs> better yeah. than me because I didn't test the BYD seal and haven't seen one in real uh, reality. Um, right. But, yeah, but that's interesting. These comparisons, the BYD seal and the Model 3 Highland um, are compared uh, pretty much um, because they're the same category, nearly the same price. Even the seal is even a little bit cheaper than the Model 3. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting to see BYD, yeah, going so further what, what was your impression uh testing those those two and comparing it uh, from your mind a little bit yeah well yeah, for, for for in in the uk for example the price is a, is a little bit different so the long range versions yeah. of both cars is the same but the standard range version the short range um i think it's about five and a half thousand pounds more for the byd mm -hmm. seal so oh, okay. that was constantly in my, yeah that, that was constantly in my mind as i was test driving it but i went into this uh into the test drive so excited i mean i really was i mean i thought i thought i still think the byd seal looks great yep. and you know mm -hmm. i've not driven a, another electric car for quite some time so i was very excited so i got into the showroom and i think it was about an hour and 10 minutes later i finally got behind the wheel of the car it was just such a painful process i had to sign my life away i had to you know give a thousand pound deposit just in case i did something and like the whole procedure of trying to test drive the thing was exhausting <laughs> so so by the time i got in the car and started trying to learn how to use the thing which took me another 20 minutes just to get you know, get out of the car park i mean you know i suppose i should say i'm a bit of a prat and a moron i don't i'm not very technical savvy with stuff but it just didn't seem very sort of intuitive, intuitive. for me mm -hmm. uh, to to work the entire system and then and then, you know, I excitedly sort of drove, was driving the car and I was trying to get used to everything. But then it just suddenly dawned on me that everything was just really squishy, like a great big fat sponge. So the steering okay. was all blobby. The brakes, you know, pressed all the way in to brake. I was like, whoa, that's weird. And then, I, you know, I went <laughs> to stop. I took my foot off the accelerator and there was like barely any regen. It, it doesn't, ah, there's, okay. no way, mm -hmm. there's no one pedal driving. So that was like, oh god, this is this is horrible. And I was, 
you know, and I put my foot down and the acceleration's good. You know, the range looked fantastic. I love the interior of the car. I thought it was nice, although, mm -hmm. you know, everything's complicated when you've been in a Tesla for a few years, isn't it? So, um, so by the end of the video, unfortunately, I, I, I started feeling really sick. Actual, I thought I was going to have to stop the car on a main road and get out to actually throw up because it, it, it was just so wobbly. <laughs> it sort of reminded me of an old Citroen or something. I don't know. I don't know whether it's the tires or something to do with, with, with my driving. I mean, I wasn't really caning it you know, around the country lanes particularly, but I, you know, I got back to the showroom and I looked a bit green. And there was a gentleman who was about to go and test drive it right after me. And he was like, what do you think of it? I was like, I feel a bit poorly. <laughs> and I sort of had to sort of say it made me feel strange. Um, I did recommend that he perhaps test drive a, uh, yeah, test drove a Tesla Model 3 just in case. But um, but I, I was trying so hard to like it. And in this video, I put it out on my channel and it's got an enormous amount of sort of hate because people are thinking I'm I'm sort of somehow scripting this and pretending that I don't like it but the whole thing is just utterly genuine and <laughs> so so that's my experience of BYD uh, seal which you know I, mm. I think still it doesn't matter my opinion of it or whatever I had to say about it or my test drive you know people just need to test drive them themselves I'm sure it'll be yeah. you know more than adequate yeah brilliant car for lots of people that's absolutely fine oh there's another thing the indicators are on the wrong side um, they're on the right hand side which is quite peculiar for for the uk but apparently oh, okay. byd are now swapping them over um so oh, so that's okay. that's resolved since my video and there's one more thing it was incessantly bleeping at me every time you got near the speed limit or over the speed limit, it didn't shut up. So my entire video is just full of this thing going bleep, bleep. And it, it doesn't matter, even if you're in a, you know, if you're in a, a 50 zone and um, the car might think you're in a 30, oh, even geez, if you're in a 50. Yeah. So then it continues to bleep and bleep and bleep <laughs> and bleep. It, it just drove me insane. So by the time I got it back to the car park, I literally hated it. I never wanted to go <laughs> again. <laughs> so, but that's just, you know, for me, I, I'm an independent person on YouTube. I don't need to, you know, have apologies to give to BYD or anyone else. I'll just say what, what is on my mind, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I might not be invited back again to test drive anything else, I suppose. But <laughs> <laughs> You're on the blacklist. And, and but at least might, it was uh, the truth. Yeah, and no China visits for you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. I know there's a particular joke I did about BYD at the beginning of my video. Um, you know, if you're very sensitive, don't go and watch my videos because yeah, just you skip might, that. Part. You might be offended. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I but, think um, it's funny. Yeah, but but um, it's it's interesting to to hear this because I think um. Sometimes of course, I mean it's it's strange. I tr also try to be very yeah neutral or. or kind of um, cater to also people that, that don't like Tesla and try to just be neutral every time I use anything. But it's very hard not to like Tesla, not to be a little bit, uh, yeah, hyped about the brand as well. It's it's easy to to get into this loop as well. But hmm. um, perhaps do what I do and just give into that and just accept it. The, you know, Teslas <laughs> are just the best cars. Period is like we should perhaps stop trying to apologize for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, but know, actually, if, yeah. But sorry that I interrupted you. No, that's but, all right. I, I yeah. forgot where I was going. <laughs> okay, okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's interesting because when you really look into this, I uh, before I owned a Tesla, I I had a normal gasoline car. It was a small Subaru. T I Trezera, saw your car. Trezia, okay, <laughs> and and. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very sweet. <laughs> it's, it's sweet. Yeah, it's a sweet Japanese car. For for going backwards, I look out of the car. I open up the the door and look backwards to 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 go back, to go backwards <laughs> to to see uh, yeah. the distance. So so no parking sensors. Uh, very low tech. I like that the gear shift was pretty high in the dash. Actually, it's it's that's that's what like a, almost like a truck. <laughs> it's a bad comparison, but I. <laughs> The interesting thing is um, when you go from low tech to high tech uh, and and change to a car. And I've driven Audis. I've I've also had lane keeping in Audis, uh, for example, the A3, for example, um, the newer one. I've I've drove that for for some trips um, because a friend of mine has that. And yeah, also tested different German car manufacturers uh, cars, but never went 
bananas about it. I, I think that's normal use case. But when you go into a tester, it's such a different story for me to experience this. And since I'm also um, from the media space and design, I really, really appreciate good interfaces, uh, good systems that just work flawlessly. I'm very, mm. very sensitive to that. And I'm very, very tech savvy. So this means if something doesn't function, so so I know when a computer doesn't give me what I want. I, 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 re I, I, I recognize that immediately. And with a Tesla, it's almost the same user experience or the same user experience as with an iPhone for me. That's exactly, why I yeah. won't switch the phone brand and I won't switch the, the car brand as well. Mm. I want to test other EVs, of course. I, I think um, there are good ones out there. And also I think from people switching from ICE to an um, electric vehicle, I think there are enough brands uh, that are way better than the internal combustion engine vehicle because most of them are kind of connected Besides VW, maybe they solved their issue finally. <laughs> Who knows? <Yep. laughs> I, I assume that sometimes you still have to go to the dealership to get an over-the-air update via USB stick. <laughs> so no over-the-air. Hor yeah. Horrible. But but yeah. th that's the thing. I walk up to the Tesla. It, it opens up itself. Uh, it sets your seat. I always tell... Uh, now four episodes I talked about this uh, because I'm still amazed <laughs> oh, by it. So you tell uh, Brian actually yesterday, was it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. it's uh, yeah, it's 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 super interesting to use cases with with this car, and um, that yeah, that's why I I just talk out of experience. And for me at least, it seems like that the BYD seal is is almost like or or BYD in general is like Android versus Apple. That's that's how I see it mm. a little bit. Yeah. And Android has a lot of market share, and yeah, Apple yeah. as well. Yeah, well, I mean, Apple is the more refined product, in my opinion. So that's also a big discussion: yeah. Android versus Apple. But so, yeah. Um, well, I, well, I think yeah. that's that's a, a really fair point. And what I keep forgetting, and and I think lots of people are just used to electric cars, is that some people are experiencing this for the first time. Yes. You know, and I, I remember, you know, four and a half years ago, we we got, you know, we bought our Tesla, but we also had our old Mini Countryman, which is a Cooper S, mm -hmm. yeah, all four mm -hmm. thing. So we sort of sold that privately once we bought the Tesla, but the, I took it for a drive just to make sure it's working okay. Two weeks afterwards, and I just remember like turning the engine on, and then it just rumbling, and then seeing the smoke come out of the exhausts. And then just doing the gears and the clutch and like the, the no technology in it. it just it's low tech. You yeah, it's almost it's like so yeah. low tech. Yeah, but it was just <laughs> it just felt so dumb. And I know you know to, to anyone watching this that is perhaps still driving an internal combustion engine, that, that sounds really arrogant for me to say. And yeah. you know like yeah. oh you know privileged is this person have an electric car? But Who's that you know at the end of the day, for talking a Tesla, oh, bad about my car. <laughs> I know. I'm really sorry, but it's just the truth of what happens when you do switch to electric car. You sort of get in yeah. it, and you just suddenly realize, oh my god, engines are so mm -hmm. dumb. It's like it's just—it's literally <laughs> a horse and cart compared to an internal combustion engine all over again. But now it's going from, you know, engines to to electric, and and it just really is so it's such night and day. But you know, a lot of people I've found out don't care and they don't want to hear about it <laughs> so mm -hmm. you just yeah, have to definitely. shut up and just go well, okay i've got this really cool car that barely costs anything to run you know and is super fast and and reliable and you know you can summon it you know no with service, a remote control yeah. from your phone you know, there's nothing to service in it you know there's just so much good news to tell people but i think we're all quite familiar with this fact is that a lot of people couldn't give a monkeys about hearing uh, good news such as, <laughs> such as that. Yeah, I think you, you made um, some some fair points. I think it's interesting, this whole discussion, because um, I get why it's difficult to listen to all those Tesla fanboys because it's too hard to believe. And um, also that uh, I would really advise people just to test drive one and uh, look for yourself uh, what you That's like it. about it yeah. and 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 look for it because yeah it's it's you have to experience it and i also talked about um tesla for over over two years um on on my channel and uh i never I, I test drove one I, I just drove around the parking lot for did some terms there was no real test from the model x i've tested um somebody had one i just asked can i give it a small spin here in the parking lot and he said okay mm -hmm. and cool. and then i've test drove one uh, first in amsterdam uh, when i visited mr green there um the, the leasing company 
that just leases out Teslas, that specialize in leasing out Teslas. And um, I've test driven a Model 3 there, and I was, I was amazed. I just sat in the uh, in the uh, passenger seat, and I was amazed by it uh, to to experience it finally. But now owning one, that's that's a that's a total different story because you experience every function it has and the intuitiveness uh, for me it was so easy to learn this car even so that i had friends over and they said oh yeah i really want to test drive your your car one day and i was like mm -hmm. while the, we were talking i sent them a link to my car that they can open it up and i said just go down take the car and drive around and i didn't even instruct them how to use it and they wow. went down yeah. And and I was so comfortable, uh, confident in in the car that they could really handle it. I just said it's like an automatic, and it stops when you lift your foot off the uh, uh, of mm. the of the accelerator. So put your left foot just on the on the side where um you on your foot rest, and that was it. And that was super interesting to see because they they've also driven an automatic. So. I'm like, okay, it's like an automatic, just just go for it. Yeah. And so that intuitive, they were confident. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And yeah. they were really shocked uh, afterwards and said, what the hell? It was, uh, yeah, they were yeah. amazed yeah. by it. And uh, that, yeah, also well, that they just could. The result. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so something like this uh, is so interesting, the intuitiveness. And now you talking about the steel, for example, also tells me something because I think your use case or or also your background in not being so tech savvy and stuff like this is actually a very, very good thing. Because if you're a tech mm. nerd, then it might be easier for you to use. But an average guy who, who isn't too techy, that's that's really one, uh, one thing to, to consider here. I think that's a good Well, thing. you saw how long it took me just to get onto this call. I mean, I'm not very tech savvy <laughs> at all. <laughs> I can barely work YouTube. It's quite amazing. I've got a channel. <laughs> but, yeah, Your I mean, camera's that's not with... working. You're not recording. You're like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, yeah. I tell you a whole host of, of mistakes I made. The first video I did, I'd recorded with a massive chunk of lettuce in my teeth. I did the entire <laughs> video. <laughs> Damn it. Start again. Um, <laughs> I was going to just mention, like, you know, I was, uh, I was going to say something about the Model 3, because when we first bought it, you know, we, we could barely afford it. it. You know, it wasn't really yeah. on our radar to be spending that much money on a car. So so we were all sort of set up to buy an i3. And we're only a, mm -hmm. a single car family, me and my wife and got two kids. Uh, but, you know, we would have we so wanted an electric car. Because after I drove an i3, I just fell in love with that one as well. I'm like, this is amazing. There was yep. whole, all that same stuff happened in my mind of how brilliantly smooth and quiet it was and how much fun, the acceleration mm -hmm. and you no know, pollution. You know, I'd fell in love with all of that stuff with the i3. Um, and it wasn't until realization of range anxiety would be a real concern there to get to weddings and back again <laughs> mm -hmm. that we decided mm -hmm. to sort of up the stakes and go for a, go for a Tesla Model 3, thankfully. But um but to anyone out there, you know, if you're if you've got a if you're a two car family and, you know, one car is just used to poodle around to the shops or just go to work and back, even if it's you've got a you know 50 mile commute, you can get any old second hand car now for like less than 10,000 pounds. Yeah. And if you can charge it at home, you won't be going to a petrol station again for the next, you know, however many years you keep that car. And there's just so many benefits to running an electric vehicle, especially if, it, you know, if, like I say, if you do have uh, if you are a two car family. Um, I, 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 it's, for me, it's it's hard to understand why people don't do that already. It doesn't make any sense in my mind because you know if you can make <laughs> yeah. it work with it with a you know two hundred mile plus um, second hand electric car, then why wouldn't you? But unless mm -hmm. you really like you know burning money at petrol stations, it doesn't doesn't really logically make sense to me. You know there are some different case scenarios aren't there where people do have to travel huge distances and yeah. you know and if it's not a tesla then you don't have the supercharging yeah, network exactly. so mm -hmm. there are a few issues there um um anyway sorry i'm, I'm rambling you you know but, take but me, no take it's, me elsewhere. It's, it's, <laughs> no it's no it's super interesting i think it's very important to to talk about this for some time because the user experience um that we are discussing now is um a very important point because i think in all the Tesla pizzazz with Elon Musk and politics and stuff like this, everything we hear, um, all the distractions more or less. Um, for me, owning that thing and, and using it every day, that makes me realize their core product is superb. And that's why they will prevail just because of that. 
their, their core product Absolutely. is better than yeah. the competitors that, that I've experienced. Mm. So um, that that's yeah, my realization really, now. After yeah. being sorry, yeah, I'm just gonna say after yeah. being after test driving the new one, it's like <laughs> I didn't realize how much better it could get, and it just yeah. mm -hmm. absolutely blew me away all over again. You know, and, and it's still it, my car. It still blows my mind every time I drive it. I've never had a car or a motorbike or any other vehicle that I used to own that's that's sort of given me that sort of pleasure, you know, or sort of capabilities mm -hmm. or performance or just the. Yeah, the fact that, you know, when it snowed last winter, you know, and it was a foot of snow on it, I just pressed defrost from inside my house. And <laughs> 10 minutes later, the car's just defrosted and it's heated up and warmed. Or, you know, on a summer's day when we're at a wedding and all sweaty, we just want to get in the car. But it's like you know, 25, 30 degrees. If we're lucky, it's one day a year in this country. Um, you know, put the, <laughs> put the air conditioning on and then we get in. And it's all nice and cold, you know, and it's just so practically brilliant in, in, in every way. And, and it really is that it comes down to the user interface and the software that's in it, the battery management system, the, you know, the efficiency the of the batteries. The integration of the mobile phone, uh, yeah. The, yeah, exactly, the app. I mean, it's just, I mean, how could you live without the Tesla app? How could you possibly go to another car and go, I'm going to give this up? <laughs> I mean, I can't, no, yeah. I no. can't imagine it. Yeah, it's, mm. if you, yeah, obviously, if you're given a choice, you know. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't take a BYD seal if it was free. That's that's my honest opinion of the, of the seal, and it's still a great car, but it's just mm -hmm. nothing like a Tesla for me. You mm -hmm. know, that's just my mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, interesting. I think um, that's a good segue actually to compare maybe the two because um, then we can see because the seal in in most most countries maybe not in in the UK, but um, oh, wait a second, let's look. Uh, okay, um switching around oh i'm not as tech savvy after all i would say <laughs> <laughs> just like click around here so i wanted to share the screen here to show you the specs here that one so if we kind of look into this um maybe you can talk a little bit about this what we we are seeing here and um your experience as well maybe you can compare it to to the uk here i don't know what Excellence means is that the long range variant of the seal does that? Yes, that's that's the long range mm -hmm. one. So the, the standard range is called the design. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, I'm just impressed you managed to share a screen. I'm blown away. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, the, 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 yeah, the, I mean, the biggest difference that, that we're looking at here is uh, is sort of weight as well as price, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. Mind you, these these prices again, yeah, they're different in euros, aren't they? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so, so bear in mind that the, the base level BYD seal is five and a half thousand pounds more than the base level Model 3. And to me, that just makes no sense at all. But <laughs> yeah. I understand why it is. I mean, BYD have got to, you know, start producing far, far cheaper cars. I mean, I do believe they're um, building a factory in Hungary, aren't they? So they can um, yes. mm -hmm. produce cars a bit cheaper for Europe and, and the UK. And as well, um, um, and um, um, over uh, jump over the the laws that might get into place with with um actually sa not not sanctions i mean um, um tariffs of, uh, on the cars for yeah. import um tariffs uh, they were discussing that in germany as well that's why i also bought the model 3 highland because it is imported from china so i thought wait a second when they now close down this great treaty a uh, treaty they have with china or or um change something there but i think they won't do it in europe because it's too expensive for them to do that, and China will it will have repercussions on the economy. So I think they won't do it. But still, uh, mm. sorry, go on. Um, I, I just wanted to. But but that's the reason yeah, why I think they want to have a backup plan to have uh, have the production also in Europe, which makes sense. Be with you. Yeah, sure. Um, and uh, as for the weight issues there. Um, you know, I mean, I think BYD have got a long way to go to to lower the weight down to a to a Tesla Model Three, which is gonna gonna be a good help. Um, but also to realize that it's the BYD blade batteries that are in the Model 3s. So, you know, yes. hats off to BYD for doing, doing a spectacular yep. job with, with creating enough batteries. I mean, I mean that's a, a really good point that I, I must make. You know, I really want BYD to be successful. We are not arguing the toss about yep. one company being better than the other. We need both of these companies to thrive and, and survive Absolutely. going forward, don't yep. we? Um, you know, the, the enemy, if you like, is internal combustion engine cars. <laughs> They're the ones that need to, need to be you know, displaced. So, you know, and then but my I, frustration, sorry, I have to, oh, yeah. I have to uh, jump in here because I think um, for me, it's not even that. I think the 
the best product should prevail, even if it's an internal combustion engine car. But oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's my view on it. I'm, I'm very. Yeah. If it was a, the best thing, it would. Yeah, be yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, and and I also yeah. get why people want to drive maybe a muscle car or a sports car that has the sound. I, I get the point. I, I get it. I, I'm not against that. Um, um, but. What I think is, that's why I also am not for incentives, actually. Let the best product win. Let it just yeah. uh, play out and win. But of course, EVs are very difficult to make and incentive also helped, uh, in incentives helped to push the industry forward to solar, for example. In the beginning, mm. also in, uh, in, in Germany, we had a huge push, but then they cut the incentive again and then nobody bought solar energy and many um, solar companies actually went bankrupt because of that. But still, I, I get the mm. point why you use incentives, but I think we have a mature enough market now from Tesla, BYD, Chinese uh, uh, manufacturers, also the Germans now bring out stuff that are super expensive, but still kind of uh, usable, let's say that. The i3 was also very good development of BYD, uh, of, of BMW, sorry. Uh, but they stopped it and now they built a platform for every uh, propulsion system they have, or how, how do you say it mm. in that's English? It. <laughs> um, um, yeah, yeah, perfect. So Repulsion yeah, uh, yeah, so uh, that's just one point I wanted to make here um, because yeah, that, that just compare the products, and I th still think that electric is better. And uh, yeah. yeah, so well, here's yeah, here's where it's going to get really exciting. I'm just going to close my window. Hang on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to fly trying to get in. Um, so I'm uh, sorry. No I'm worries. Just going to turn my turn my radiator off. I think my heating's gone crazy tonight. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> no worries. That, that's <laughs> you, uh, your house seems not to be like a Tesla. Is it? Just... I'm usually freezing all day sat in my office. Yet today it's it's like a flipping heat wave in here. Um, <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Um, what was I just about to say? Oh, oh yeah. So so the exciting part, isn't it? Is who of electric cars is driving down the sort of cost curve of of you know the batteries and the, and the, the yeah. manufacturing uh, you know system because. You know, there's so much money to be saved here in in cost savings that I just think it's it's going to be fantastic when we get down to you know truly you know twenty five thousand dollar sort of electric cars and and that just keeps getting lower and lower with each each iteration of uh, manufacturing, which is you know I think that's that's my exciting um, I don't know it's, it's the exciting future that we're all really hopeful for, isn't it? That, that cars will become so much cheaper in the future, you know, and then you're layering on top of that robo taxes and and autonomy and software as a service and you know it's, it's there's just so much excitement in the world of tesla and uh yeah i can't wait for it bring it on yeah, yeah. and and i also think you you've mentioned a good point um with of course we need manufacturers to jump on this technology more um that's why mm. byd is interesting because they um produced smartphone batteries before they they are in the battery segment before they they did many things power banks and stuff like this. And then they perfection more and more the battery production. And yeah, with BYD together with Tesla, with Panasonic, with LG, with uh, all of those big players in the battery segment, they've cut down the costs significantly. And now the price is l lower as never before. Yeah, what is it, $85, $85 yeah. per kilowatt hour or something? Yeah, yeah, something like uh, this. I, I tried to uh, figure out the number, uh, but, yeah, but I, was, I uh, couldn't find it. We, we are, uh, there's a great chart to uh, to say that. So imagine a great chart where battery cost is pretty low. Now. <laughs> yes. Quick, go <laughs> to Tony Sieber. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got it somewhere. I'm gonna do, do it uh, in the background. Yeah. Uh, he, he was predicting, wasn't mm -hmm. he, once it gets to this sort of level, that it would just... <laughs> are you just seeing a ghost again? I've... I've got a fly in here. Can, can we just have two minutes? Oh, you annoying little git. I think. Maybe you scared okay. her to take a death nap. I think I wouldn't hurt a fly, honestly. <laughs> Unless it's a fly <laughs> in your room. <laughs> yeah, and now uh, talking about uh, BYD supplying Tesla as well with those blade batteries, for example, and they are kind of partnering because, of course, BYD is a huge, huge supplier uh, to Tesla as well. And uh, how do you view that, that uh, the competitor, if we can call it that one, has a partnership, actually, a friend, open, friendly partnership, and they are no. the 
yeah. the next competitor to Tesla in in terms of volume uh, production. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even, that's even great, isn't in it? One quarter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's nothing but good news there, is it? It's uh, that's exactly what we needed. It's just you know, what a shame more car companies could have couldn't have sort of come together here and sort of race towards this battery manufacturing process. But you know what we're hearing from like you know General Motors and Ford and stuff is they're sort of cutting <laughs> back on these. You know, scaling for these battery projects and stuff. Mercedes just seems, as well. Yeah, yeah. As well. yeah. And it's just, it's, it just blows my little mind. I don't understand why, <laughs> you know, unless, unless of course these companies know what's going to happen now. They, they have done the calculations. Mm. They're like, there is no way through this. We cannot become an electric car company whilst maintaining the status quo of mm. trying to sell a dead horse. You know, it's just, it's not going to make sense, is it, financially? And, <sighs> And clearly they can't come up with the goods to anywhere near, you know, the the, the standard of mm. what Tesla is delivering, let alone Tesla's newest, you know, the Model 2 platform when that's out. I mean, just it's just an abundance of, of pressure onto these old car companies. And I I don't think there's any way through it. You know, and I, I, if I'm honest, I don't think there's been any hope for for most legacy car companies for quite a few years now. And maybe they know it. And they're mm. just trying to rinse anything they can by saying, here's some new hybrids or, <laughs> you know, I, I don't see a way out that's, that's any good for them anymore. And that means that mm. sort of change in landscape is going to be left to the, obviously the Chinese manufacturers, you know, maybe high and Ikea, they seem to be doing a, mm -hmm. a yep. good enough job, um, you know, and Tesla, but, you know, really we need more, we need many, many more um, electric car companies and I just don't think they're going to come from the traditional means, which is is brutal because mm -hmm. you're talking about millions of people's jobs. You know, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, coming or living in the country of uh, car manufacturing, the German, Germany is a car hub uh, over here. I mean, you've mentioned the Mini before that's owned by BMW now. So, so uh, for yeah. a longer time. Yeah. So, so. Um, of course, the Mini Cooper Countryman actually is a BMW. <laughs> so, yes, <laughs> um, or the even the, it was the wonderful great for what it Bentleys was. <laughs> and stuff like this uh, are also yeah. BMWs. So, um, hmm. yeah, it's 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 interesting to to see this, and of course, it's saddening me um, because I know the economy is hanging onto those. Uh, I mean, the car segment is huge, especially the third party suppliers and. Um, I know on in in which pressure they're standing because um, I live in southwest Germany uh, near the uh, so so the Black Forest here um, has also a lot of um, actually suppliers. Um, for example, there are yeah many suppliers of for example um, uh, Look for example are making um, those. Uh, oh, I, I can't even tell you what it is in English. It's hard for me to translate that, but the the thing where you press your foot on to change gear clutch the clutch yeah the clutch a, a clutch ah. manufacturer what ah, the what? hell will a clutch, clutch manufacturer yeah. do that, <laughs> yes. a, a world leading a world leading clutch manufacturer um wow. that provides uh, a vw uh with, for example with clutches they try to get into the software space now by to do control electronics and stuff like this because there's the expertise kind of but ah, hard sell for mm. a good software company uh, like tessa why should they use that but what i think will happen is that those small and medium enterprises um will kind of go bankrupt or they shift for example that uh, also ebm pops um they're called they make those small uh, ventilation systems also for computers um, so um, they also were specialized in supplying uh, car manufacturers with their um, small uh, ventilation systems and stuff like this. And they even switched over to computers now um, to servers again and uh, focused on that segment uh, totally and just left the automotive sector um, total, uh, in, in total because they don't really see a future in that. That's mm. what I assume, but, but they didn't say something publicly, of course. But yeah, so for me, it's concerning. How do you see it? I mean, um, I mean, the economy, <laughs> economy wise, if we look at all the big brands uh, here in Europe, uh, how do you see that? Well, we, we're sort of worrying about the um, the different businesses involved in the auto industry, aren't we? Mm -hmm. And <laughs> all the while, this is under a gigantic sort of black umbrella of artificial intelligence and <laughs> AGI. <laughs> and just thinking, yeah. yeah, well, okay, we're worried about this little thing called the car industry. 
at the same time that AI is just, just going to be disrupting the world on a scale we've never seen before. Yeah. You know, it's like how, how far do you want to go down that rabbit hole? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Uh, it's, it's brutal, isn't it? It's, um, I guess, you know, the world's always changed, doesn't it? No matter when you were born or, you know, whatever mm. era you were born into, everything must seem quite technologically challenging to, you know, as you're growing older, but, uh, just never has there been a moment in time like now, which is just, it just seems so alive and exciting, doesn't it? And, you know, mm. if I, I don't know, I just, I just hope, I hope, I hope society, you know, in, in, in general could just get through this, this phase of phase of shifting, you know, off fossil fuels into a sustainable mm. energy future. I mean, that that's, that's my overarching sort of hope and goal for Tesla. I mean, it, it is their mission to transition the world to you know, sustainable energy. You know, as soon as possible, really. And most of society seem to hate Tesla for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just to not be on board with that message and not quite understand the importance mm -hmm. of what they're trying to do and easily dismissing Elon for just being a, a prat. You know, it's, it's that's <laughs> yeah. not it. You know, it's, <laughs> he really does seem genuinely to care and to put his money where his mouth is to help humanity thrive and survive going forward. And that message just isn't landing with anyone. You know, I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't particularly think having no PR department helps. I mean, it seems yeah, like, yeah, know, France, uh, France mm -hmm. and uh, and Lars Moravi have just done a great job of actually showing the world, you know, about the Model Three and and mm -hmm. more news like that. You know, from Jay Leno and just lots of YouTubers mm -hmm. sort of promoting Tesla products. But um, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's, it's my. I've done done a video about it today. Really, I was going to actually press press uh, release just before i came on but i'll have to wait oh, till no. tomorrow now <laughs> i've been working on it all day trying to rush it out but it's not happening tonight I'll yeah i get i know those days yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i was yeah. trying to get it out but you know but it just sort of discusses that very point at the end of the video it's like you know we all need to get on board with 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 what tesla's doing you know and other companies that are trying to move us forward and we, we are being constantly held up by luddites and idiots that are just trying to get in the way of progress and there's not enough i don't think there's enough people standing up to them and saying do you realize what you're doing by saying no to this you know in the uk we've just had a you know there's a place in kent that have just said no to a battery energy storage facility going on the uk's largest solar farm you know so that, so they've you know they're outside picketing their local council and the council have gone no okay we won't have this because they think the battery energy storage system might explode. That's their reasoning. Oh. So ah. without any evidence whatsoever of an exploding battery pack, I mean, there's been you know <laughs> one or two fires granted when they weren't plugged in and you know fully underway. That the one in uh, Australia did did catch fire, but it was it was put out within six hours. It wasn't the end of the world, uh, you know. And these local luddites have just said no, we don't want this clean energy system that's going to you know harness energy from the sunshine for decades to come you know we don't want this in our backyard as it were and it's just so frustrating because it's people like those that are that are stopping progress for for humanity mm. you know on a grand scale and there's people like this around the world that are saying no to wind farms even though they're in the sea you know or <laughs> no to solar farms behind hedges that you can't see and you know no to electric you know, even Giga Berlin trying to expand into the woods. And I, as I understand it, the woods, it's not an ancient woodland. It's, you know, it's a deliberate it's not plantation. A forest. It's, yeah, so it's, it's designed to be cut forest. down, designed to be cut down to use for wood. And you've got these hippies no, up for there. paper production, even because it's <laughs> not production. usable. It's not usable for wood. It's for paper production because oh, it's word. actually okay. even worse. As a, so it's not a high quality hard wood that you could use for i mean you could use it for planks or anything but or four by four so the americans say but yeah it's for paper production guys and it yeah, was bought yeah. and, by and they don't even use that much water but i i, I can rant <laughs> about a giga well it's so long it's well, me too. No, me those it, it makes no sense lignite mining is in in the same area or not area but but they are the ones that use up most water 100 times more than is that the, than the coal power station that's there uh, it, no no um the oh. the the lignite or or brown coal mine um mines that are there in the region actually they use up for example um they're called uh, leak is the company's name okay and they are 
brown coal extractors. So they use 100 mm. times more water than Tesla. And nobody's protesting yeah, yeah. there. Nobody yeah, gives a damn about this. And, and it yeah, just, yeah. It, it, this, even if, if Tesla recycles all its water now, they are not, uh, it's, it's not sufficient for them. It, it doesn't and make I understand any, that they, any they sense. Are they are automotive leaders in the space of, of water efficiency as well. So they use less water yeah, than practically anyone that. else, <laughs> constantly making improvements. And, you know, even the, this morning, I looked at where the factory was on Google and just zoomed out and saw the size of the forest that it's in and the tiny speck, which is, you know, Giga Berlin. <laughs> I just want to see you use that bit of land next to it. It just it just blows my tiny mind that people are getting in the way of this progress and to the point that they're willing to burn down pylons and you know set fire to the electrical infrastructure and that's put the factory on hold for a week i mean who knows you know who's causing the other the other amounts of damage you know setting fire to you know a number of model y's that i saw and setting fire to um i can't remember what, it, what, what else it was i saw now but Su superchargers and uh, yeah, yeah superchargers and... yeah you're unbelievable yeah. It just these are supposed environmentalists <laughs> that are setting <laughs> fire to things it just it, <laughs> yeah. I don't I can't get my head around the stupidity of it personally. Um and my frustration was was totally unfiltered on my video. Um I can't remember what it what it was called, but uh oh yes I can. Eco terrorists. That's what yeah. the video was called. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I it's think I said everything I wanted it's to kind say. Of true, yeah. <laughs> it's exactly yeah, it's, true. It's it, yeah, yeah, it starts it's, it's, off with the definition of a terrorist. Um, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, it goes on from there. <laughs> Yeah, but do you see a positive about this situation? Not in the sense that it's a good thing to burn out, burn down electrical infrastructure, of course. But I mean, for Tesla well, as a net positive, having the the maybe the the uh, yeah the the production is down one week, there might be damage to some machinery. We don't know. They have to extract uh, uh, the aluminium from from the fur, those furnaces maybe because they i was wondering about that like, what yeah, sort yeah. of damage yeah, yeah. Might it's, it's, have taken it place. yeah I, can't, I can't imagine yeah we have talked uh, about that with did Alex just Boyd suck, before didn't it? What, what is i so, look forward so, to um yeah i look forward yeah. to, to watching that episode actually because i really like alex I've, I've yeah i've been following him for a long time and uh, yeah he shared my video as well so it kind of took off on on x which is quite nice mm -hmm. um, cool <laughs> that's, yeah, but that's you know awesome. the comment section is just full of of people like me who are just so damn frustrated with with being held back by this proportion of society yeah. who just cannot see the big picture and what we need to do to move forward. And you know, this is not talking about sort of net zero, so the, the sort of you know the suppression of the people who can't afford it. It's nothing to do with that. This is about a company that's trying to push forward, you know, to create an, an abundant mm. amount of energy in the future. It's like yes, it's it's expensive at the moment. You know, but unless we build it, we're not going to have this this future of cheaper electricity. So we, we need to let them build it. We need to move, shift to electric cars, you know, get more batteries, more more home energy, more utility scale energy projects. If we don't do this, there will never be an abundant amount of energy because, you know, we're just going to be sucking on the teat of fossil fuels for decades to come if we don't, you know. <laughs> so how else to say it? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I think also that the technology helps um, to yeah get more or less localized with your electricity production with mm. with um, with solar energy, with battery storage in your own home, for example. Of course, nobody owns their own home, but I also think that cities can really improve by just putting solar panels everywhere, more or less on the roofs. Um, and then yeah. suddenly with smart grids, it really makes sense. But of course, the uh, energy companies don't want that, and I think this plays into their hands all the time. If if there's a complaint, uh, people that are riled up because of Tesla uh, cutting down a paper forest or a forest for paper production, uh, but mm. yeah, this seems to me to so so absolutely crazy. And I think you're totally right uh, on that. That um, yeah, it's it's. I'm just it's, a bit scared of how it how it ends, you know, because mm -hmm, there's a tipping mm -hmm. point here. You know, if yeah. not enough people do understand what they're talking about and they are mm. just, you know, holding up progression, I don't know where that mm. leads. <laughs> you know, that yeah. kind of worries me a bit, you know, mm -hmm. uh, honestly, for, for my children and, and future generations. But again, I'm thinking I'm thinking so much further ahead, I suppose, than than a lot of these people that just can't see past a tree. Mm -hmm. um yeah i'm just trying yeah. to look for the big picture and just I, I want i want to progress and i want to see the world progressing these these people are holding things up i just want them to get out of the way you know just just let mm -hmm. let 
the people who can be bothered and are brave enough to progress into the future let let, let them get on with it <laughs> just yeah you know but i don't know how how that can happen especially when you've now got you know the political landscape where you know the police are a bit afraid to get involved with these people and mm -hmm. you know i'm sat here in a country where i know over three and a half thousand people have been arrested for supposed you know hate crimes you know just for, yeah, for verbally saying something and it's a bit you know i don't know there's lots to discuss and this is going to get more yeah. like a joe rogan podcast unless i shut up I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i'm still looking for my tinfoil hat <laughs> but <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> no no but i get you absolutely get your point i also see i see this um shift which it's it's everything seems every political spectrum is uh instrumentalized today it's 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 a weapon uh, it's a weapon to take those or, or those leftist radical groups that are actually anti-capitalist. That's their goal, not environmental friendly anything. They just they just w are against Elon mm. Musk for what he stands for. He's a tech billionaire. He he stands for everything they hate, and um, they don't seem to see how they are instrumentalized as well by by mm. other. Uh, I, I don't see that there's a conspiracy theory that they are backed by anybody, but um, I I get the point. It's living in Germany. I know those leftist groups. There are also right wing groups uh, as well sometimes, but the leftist groups are really loud and um, very. You mm. can really see them a lot. They, for example, uh, um, take out air out of or, or um, screw off those caps and then take out air out of luxury cars. For example, they also were at the G20 summit where they burned down cars. Uh, so so. From the radical left side there so okay wow. uh, when you want to do that uh, that's stupid and uh, costly and uh, doesn't help anything especially for example burning down this this uh, electrical infrastructure where a lot of nursery homes actually were attached to and wow. villages and so that's what i mean i also talked about that in the last episode that this will be actually a net positive for tesla in my opinion because we now have the case that the average German public is against terrorism, is against burning down infrastructure. <laughs> Hurrah! They, yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. they like people who live uh, or, or protest in, in the trees a little bit more, but uh, now the radical left is mixed into that camp of people that are just environmentalist yeah. groups that are also kind of misguided, but still. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt, but now they're mixed together with that, lumped together, and they will be investigated, of course, because suddenly they set, there is a camp near this electrical outlet, and then the electrical outlet burns. The first thing you want to investigate is those tree houses. So I think that's yeah. also a thing, and um, I think that the people that voted against Tesla's expansion, they are more conservative types of people and i think they're gonna switch over to the side of tesla here and say yeah and, and i think maybe they will shift if they have um a lot of reasons to do that of course tesla has to give some benefits and stuff like this but um still i think that um this will be a net positive for tesla for the public discussion uh, in germany I because really hope so. Yeah. yeah, because the German government doesn't F around with this kind of topic, especially because we have a history of, of um, left wing terrorism in Germany. And uh, because of the RAF, the, 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 the terrorist group that um, uh, kills politicians here uh, as well in the 70s and um, hijacked a plane and stuff like this and did bomb attacks and stuff like this. So, um, hmm. There is a radical arm here, and and they don't f around if they destroy infrastructure. Then then the thing is too much. This volcano group that confessed had this confession, mm. strange confession letter to to say the least, because it doesn't make any sense in my opinion. But um, I've I've discussed it last time. The good thing is we had breaking news uh, now that. And that's a good thing, uh, talking about government support, about the case of a Tesla or for Tesla, I think it's, it's going to be very net positive, is that the federal public prosecutor general of Germany is now taking on the case uh, of the arson attack on Gigabel Learn. And this means that Germany actually will take every step possible to track down the volcano group. So that's what I've tweeted out. Uh, and Great. 
Yeah, so so that's a that's a good thing because now the kind of the German FBI is looking into this, and um, they they have way more leeway in in in, in prosecution and and finding people because um, they have mm -hmm. all the systems they can use. Um, the the local uh, police isn't as um, equipped to do that because they don't really communicate. This is a yeah. very good thing um, that this good. is going to be yeah. resolved. I think. Um, this time, because last time the Volcano Group also did an uh, arson attack, but that was just a mild one, a smaller case, so they didn't seem to see it necessary. But this one, attack on infrastructure in Germany is a German problem, and also that uh, international media is on this and looking onto Germany. We now n need to show as well that we are capable of tracking down somebody and uh, doing that. So I think... This yeah, it's bad for business, isn't it? You know, if you're uh, going to allow yeah, such of, things to take place. <laughs> so, uh, kind of, yeah. because then people yeah. say, why should we open up in, in, in Germany when the infrastructure will be attacked? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So that's a, that's a good thing. That's that's the case for the for the um, terrorist group there. But um, do you see that, was it a good thing that Tesla went to Germany, in your opinion? What's your opinion on that? Um. I've, you know, I've not really thought about it too much. I mean, I would have liked them to have come to the UK, but you know, <laughs> with Brexit, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. everything. Please, I probably, I'm pretty sure I would have been a drone pilot by now and just watching, you know, <laughs> yeah. gigging UK be built, but not happening. <laughs> so, uh, no, it's, yeah, it, it's great to have one so close. You know, it, uh, I certainly would have hoped for, um, hope for the cars to be built there and, and you know, we could go and, you know, pick them up and drive to the UK. That would be quite cool. But uh, instead, they mm -hmm. come all the way from China, and certainly would have hoped they would be cheaper as well. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. you know. um, no, I, yeah, I don't really have too many thoughts on that. Really, I'm just I'm just happy with every new factory location that, that Tesla makes. Really, that's that's the overall, you know, the uh, point of the business, isn't it? Just to, to try and get a factory on every continent and provide as many cars as they can. Yeah, absolutely. I, I also agree there um, that. Yeah, for me, it's still a net positive, a good thing uh, for Germany, mm. even if, if it's critical for many people, the Mar Americans said, oh, they should never have opened up. But I think it's important, <laughs> especially yeah. when the German um, car, um, uh, uh, small and medium enterprises um, that are attached to the, to the auto industry and also experts from the auto industry, we need kind of a pool to, to grab those talents and that's a good thing uh, that Tesla's there as well, because this is yeah. almost like a backup. If 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 German car manufacturers fail, then yeah. the government will step in. But still, I think they have with Tesla a good partner there to to actually mm. rack up talent, because um, if needed, of course, uh, they're doing a great job hiring already. So yeah, 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 sure. Um, I mean, yeah, this going off on a bit of a tangent, but I suppose when when Giga Shanghai was built, you know, it seemed like you know, the Chinese were perhaps getting sort of, uh, you know, getting ready to see what Tesla were up to with, with a bit of interest, you know, and sort of not mm -hmm. necessarily copying or plagiarizing their work, but <laughs> certainly yeah, sort of seeing, you seeing see what Tesla were doing. Similar headlines. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't want to be the one to say it, but yeah, I kind of <laughs> thought that might have been the case in Germany. You know, you might have thought that BMW and Mercedes and you know, Audi yeah, yeah. might have been a bit more interested in what Tesla were building. But it just seems to it seems they were not, and they weren't at all threatened, just because they thought mm -hmm. that nothing could ever touch them. But you know, to perhaps to their surprise, they're realizing, oh, we are a bit late to this after all. But uh, you know, the, the opportunity that BMW had from such a long time ago with that, you know, the excellent i3, you just thought, you know, a couple <sighs> of years after that had come out, here's going to be the saloon version of that, a family, you know, five seater. Mm -hmm. We would have been buying a BMW, you know, because it the i3 was so excellent. But it just yeah. took so long for them to sort of finally get to this stage where they're, they're producing, you know, decent sized cars. And it's, yeah, I'm never going to be, uh, you know, unshocked by that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's, it's so interesting with disruption. If you look at, into disruption and how this plays out, um, for example, there in the seventies, I assume there was the ball printer, for example, or HP thought, yeah, no worries, everything's cool now. 3D printing, yeah. <laughs> and now <laughs> yeah. MakerBot is a huge brand in in 3D printing, and they, that's also printers. They slept totally in the 3D segment. Now they're coming up finally 
with the idea well, how about we do some 3d printing stuff but there's so much out there and and stuff like this or Kodak is also a prime example they had digital <laughs> camera divisions in the big end of the 80s I think even and they experimented with that and they were like a film will be the future ha 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 a phone will <laughs> never replace the the f like the uh, film yeah. camera the photo camera and they had their Kodak moment I have to say yeah that's it <laughs> Hindsight's wonderful, yeah. isn't it? And for me, mm -hmm. it just seems so clearly written on the wall now for years and years what's coming. And, you know, I don't know. I guess either I'm insane or I'm going to be proved right eventually, like so many others. It's just, it's so damn obvious that electric cars are the future and sustainable energy is the future. But <laughs> there's just mm -hmm. far too many people who perhaps haven't thought about it in depth enough to, to come to the same conclusion, despite the, you know, plethora of people that are putting these you know putting these studies and cases together and just showing everyone the writing on the wall <laughs> just read the mm -hmm. writing <laughs> no <laughs> it's just weird yeah, I, get um, it. I think there are some concerns of course the range is now gone i mean range anxiety isn't isn't a thing anymore with at least with teslas there are some still that are not good enough um the german car manufacturers mercedes does a kind of great job but uh with range and everything but efficiency is a total different story i think mm. uh their interfaces are not good let's let's no. say it this way i mean if tet tet tetris is lagging yeah, uh that's <laughs> that's a bad look my game boy can play uh, like it's it's, yeah. it's it's unfathomable i can't wrap my head around uh, the interface design there but um yeah, it's 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 not a match. It's 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 not that. But um, I think pricing is a big point, and I think the twenty five thousand dollar car will absolutely, really, will be the breaking point. And I get why Tesla is so desperate to build so many factories to to get to to have it available because this thing will sell like hotcakes. And I think Germany as well, or Tesla Gigafactory Germany here as, as well, is so. Mm important for that as well because they build out the battery infrastructure the battery production in gigabillion actually and yeah. i know why because they want to put that into cars to have it even cheaper for the market and i think it makes sense but let's see where they're going to build it uh, what's your expectation for the twenty five thousand dollar car here in europe um well yeah i mean i did hear um uh, lee from uh, tesla economist you know suggesting that maybe the twenty five thousand dollar car isn't going to sell that well, um, which which quite surprised me because um, I've, I've tried to think about that and thought of a scenario where it just wouldn't work. I mean, you've got <laughs> let's say you've got all the technology of of the Model Three in a smaller mm -hmm. shell for a lot less cost. Um, I don't know who would who wouldn't buy it. The only the only way I can um, I can sort of counter that that argument in my head or try and sort of steel man that position is. You know, people today are still buying really bad cars for a lot of yeah. money. And yeah. logically, it makes no sense, but they are actually doing that. So I can, yeah. I, you know, I can try and put myself in that position of thinking, oh, you know, what if they didn't sell millions of $25,000 cars? I mean, it would make no logical sense by anyone's measures, would it? Because <laughs> you've got an amazing mm -hmm. product, probably with an amazing range and all the Tesla benefits. Um so, so that's an interesting uh, thought experiment to try and imagine a case where they won't sell many, but I, I seem to always land on the fact that they will sell a lot. <laughs> certainly, yeah, certainly yeah. in Europe, China. I mean, maybe America is a little bit different because of the sort of size problem of, of America. Yeah. Not, not Americans, cars, size <laughs> size of cars. You know what I mean? Be a little bit um, decent, Tessa. A jigsaw oh, yeah. year. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's... I, oh, great. I've yeah. been labeled as a fattest now, aren't I? Sorry, America. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, they have yeah. larger cars. I mean, they don't really, yeah. uh, you know, don't tend to have little Fiesta size cars over there, do they? Um, well, they didn't when I was there anyway. Can't, yeah, they all seem to have trucks and big people carriers. But um, so who knows? Maybe the Model 2 won't sell that brilliantly in, in America. That's a possibility because of, because of a size mm. issue. But but they've even said, haven't they, um, that it's going to be more of a mini SUV. It's not quite going to be a compact, you know, tiny car. It's not going to be mini sized, is it? It's going to be big enough, you know, to squeeze five adults mm. in it still. So it's not going to be that small, I don't imagine. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I did yeah, I also, did do another. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So yeah, go please, on. Please. 
No, no, please, please. No, I've changed my mind. No, I don't want to go down there now. Actually, I've changed my mind. <laughs> I'll carry on. <laughs> if you really, you're maybe. <laughs> okay. There is a video. I've gone there. I will go down there. It's a video I've already done where I discuss the idea of, of Tesla not needing a paint shop for the mm -hmm. uh, for future cars because yeah. you've got you know obviously you don't need paint for the for the Cybertruck. You certainly won't yeah. need to paint a a robo taxi, a dedicated robo taxi, because who cares about the color? Um, mm -hmm. And then obviously the the current vehicles. They've got their paint shops. So then that just leaves the Model 2, doesn't it? And now, um, yeah, my idea in the video was that maybe it's, you know, stainless steel or, or aluminium, I suppose, um, without paint. And then the, the idea would be maybe just people get more into wrapping because Tesla are producing wraps for cars now. They're mm -hmm. sort of dipping their toe into that. So, you know, why mm -hmm. are they doing that? Maybe that's going to be a simpler process mm -hmm. in the future for those that want to spend the extra money on, on a wrap rather than paint. Because the paint mm -hmm. process, apparently, according to Sandy Munro and uh, and others, is the most expensive part of car manufacturing. Yeah. So if you can and delete a lot that from of the water, process, a lot of yeah, water a lot of experience. water, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did do some sort of calculations on how much paint per car there might be. Things like uh, fifteen, oh, you know, I don't even know what I'm talking about there. I'm just it was just a guess. I think fifteen, you know, liters or something per paint mm -hmm. and primer and everything per vehicle. So that was a bit of a bit of an idea as well so um or i might just yeah, be totally wrong yeah no no i also agree i also think it's i really hope that it will be a mini cyber truck in, in some kind of way <laughs> yeah tom zu, zu uh, kind of talked about it maybe not stainless steel who, who knows ah, a different yes, material yeah, yeah, yeah he said something there but uh, i said knows, uh, I, I, oh paint is expensive didn't he yeah 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 so uh, he gave right, a lot yeah. of hints but um Hmm. Not clear if it will be stainless steel, but still, he didn't he, uh, say it would not be stainless steel. But yeah, uh, well, I've had plenty of people that. in the comment section of that video saying there's no way it's going to be stainless steel because it'd be too heavy. Um, so mm. okay, maybe stamped mm. panels yeah. that are aluminium. I don't know. Yeah, there's a. The, it's just weird, isn't it? Why would Tesla start offering wraps? And uh, you know, they know paint's yeah. expensive. They delete things like indicator stalks. It's a possibility they might indicate it, they might delete uh, delete things that we can't even imagine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I also think so. It's, it it makes sense to to go that route maybe for Tesla, especially for the mass produced car. I think paint mm. shop uh, will be relevant still for the Model Three and and the the not stainless steel cars, of course, because mm. they need a kind of protection and a wrapping is maybe not an option for for those kinds of cars, but. Um, yeah, I, I think a good approach um, they're doing. And I think the $25,000 car will have a significant upside for, for the European market as well. How do you see that unfold in Europe? Uh, do you have an opinion on that? If the model $25,000 car hits here, uh, what do you see? Do you, will it sell like hotcakes or what's your opinion well, on that? Well, yeah, so I, I would assume that it would sell really, really well. But again, mm. <laughs> I'm fighting against... You know, trying to imagine being in the heads of other people who make yeah. really strange car choices and would be willing <laughs> to spend more money to not get a yeah. Tesla. But but then, you know, I also have to think of, uh, you know, people like my parents who, you know, there's no doubt about it. They will not they will never get a Tesla because they, they mm -hmm. don't want to be dealing with that screen. They, no, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. they, they just want buttons. They want, you know, just normal. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they'll, they'll probably move to an electric car. But one that feels very normal, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. so that that's yeah. probably a great deal of the population too. Yeah. Um, not everyone Absolutely. is super tech savvy, and I, I think you do need to, you know, have a certain level of, of you know, tech about you just to work the app. I mean, if I imagine my dad trying to, you know, open the car and preheat it or set it to charge or <laughs> just anything, just it might take some time. You know, he might be better off not getting that car. <laughs> no yeah. offense, Dad. But, but do watching. your parents use a smartphone already? barely they, they do have barely um, okay Sad. yeah they okay. do have smartphones but it's it's you know <laughs> so okay. uh yeah bless them i hope they're not watching sorry if you are <laughs> no but but uh yeah I, th I think that's that's one i think um people who use smartphones kind of can get into it i think um at some point um not to be as tech savvy but still i 
Yeah, I also can hardly imagine my mom driving uh, the test. I have, still have to test that, and it could be a great yeah, episode yeah. because she's also, <laughs> yeah, also English would be native speaking yeah. speaker. So, uh, yeah. in fact, <laughs> I got my, my dad to you, right? my dad drove the car when I first bought it. I let him have a go, and he drove it absolutely fine. You know, liked it, mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. seemed totally normal. But it really is just the software issue for for him just mm -hmm. working anything mm -hmm. on his, on a touch screen it would take too long. Um, yeah, yeah. So that is a proportion of of. Um, of the UK, isn't it? You, you know, anyone, I don't want to, oh, no, I'll, I'll perhaps stop talking now because I might get in trouble now with, with old people, mind I? <laughs> if I suggest that anyone over 70, you know, might be a little, you know, unfamiliar with being able to work a Tesla, I'm going to have a lot of 70 year olds angry now, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. So be careful. Yeah. We, we, will, uh, we will stop here because, uh, of course, uh, in UK and in Germany, we don't have sp free speech like in the US. <laughs> so we will stop talking now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah. yeah. Do you but, mean the most incarcerated it's... country, country in, on the planet, America, <laughs> that free speech place? Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but. Let me speak again, please. <laughs> yeah, I, I will take over you. I was going to say, the yeah. joy of doing my own videos is I can cut myself out, and every video I put up, I have my wife watches it first. She's like, You cannot say that. Take that out, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> You'll be okay, arrested. I can't so. wait to see your yeah. channel grow as much that you yeah. don't give a damn anymore. I just put everything out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they want to dangerous. listen to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but yeah. but Will, I think I think um, we we've did a great job, like kind of uh, looking into the European market a little bit, looking a little bit into the competitors, the BYD. We've compared it a little bit. We didn't even go into detail about the numbers. Um, I'm going to pull it up again for the audience to finalize the step. I mean, oh, the yes. Model Three is almost mm. better in every segment. I think the BYD seal here has a little bit higher acceleration. But uh, the overall top speed, let's go through it. I mean, yeah, you, you can see for yourself. It's it's the cargo capacity is higher. We have, yeah, the the weight is lower significantly by three hundred fifty seven kilos, which is pretty good. I, how much pounds are that? No, one one sixty, one seventy, something like this. One eighty. The I'm half sure. half of that, I think, something mm. like this. I'm I'm super confused why <laughs> the US actually doesn't use metric, so that's a big discussion here. Metric feet, I'm, come I'm, on, guys. I'm <laughs> confused with numbers in general, so I'm afraid I'm no yeah, help. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. And I'm yeah. a, de a designer, so numbers. I haven't seen numbers since school, so <laughs> yeah. yeah. The BYD Seal is a great car. You know, loads of people mm -hmm. will buy it. Loads of people will love it. But all I could give is my own opinion of driving it when compared to the new Tesla Model Three. And mm -hmm. it didn't at all live up to any expectations for me. You know, I did. I, I went from loving it and being so excited to hating it and wanting to, to give it back as soon to as be possible. Sick, like literally sick after the drive. Yes, yes. But <laughs> well, you know, that's again, a review. <laughs> I, I know. I, I felt really bad for the end of that video, and someone even you know cheekily said, "Oh, this 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 is like watching someone in a pantomime." You know, they thought I was actually <laughs> acting. You know, and I'm like, I could not be more real. <laughs> So maybe if I have actually been sick all over the steering wheel, you know, some people might go, oh, this guy's actually genuine. He's saying but, what he thinks. Um, but but, but, but then yeah. there would be a reason that they, they that they took 1,000 pounds from you because they had to clean up the car afterwards. <laughs> exactly. Oh, God, what happened yeah. here? Not again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps happening. You know, we should really yeah. toughen the suspension or something. Yeah. But for me, it just, yeah, didn't feel, feel great. But then another thought after I'd driven it, was like, maybe I'm so used to the smoothness yeah. of a Tesla, you know, because you, you do have one pedal driving and you just come to a stop. You don't slam your brakes in all the time. Yeah. You don't jerk with your, you know, I've not been in a car with a clutch and all the jerkiness associated with it since my Mini four and a half years ago. So maybe this is right. You know, maybe this is what other cars would do to me. Maybe they would make me feel sick too, because it's just not got the, <laughs> the smoothness. You know, So maybe I should test that theory and go, go out for a, a drive, you know, in a friend's car or something and see if I can make myself sick. That's an exciting yeah. video. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to have a small anecdote for the end here as well. Um, we also have two cars because I bought them on three. That's our second car now but our first favorite car I would say. but um sometimes my wife drives around with our small internal combustion engine car to get my daughter uh, to to the kindergarten and stuff like this and um the interesting thing is i once switched over and i just 
drove the tester for around one or two months, let's say one and a half months, something like this. And I just, I drove in the evening and I started the car and I felt like I was in a death trap. No joke. I was so used to the Tesla already in such a small span of time. And I that was totally surprising to me because I can yeah. adjust pretty fast to situations, uh, yeah. to newer situations. I also dwell like that. I really love that to, to, <laughs> to do that, to get into new situations. But it was like a death trap. I, I didn't know how to blink. I always touched the, 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 the buttons on the wheel to blink. I, I, just, I tell you I, what, the, what that reminds me of is, is when I used to have a motorbike, so that, that like four stroke motorbike, yeah. so you get engine braking. But then mm -hmm. I had a, a, a two stroke little, you know, death trap of a, of a motorbike. And again, you've got no engine brake in there. So when you let go of the accelerator, you just roll like, like you do in a normal car, you know, and that that's kind of similar to going from a car mm -hmm. that's got one pedal driving, isn't it? You just let off yeah. the accelerator and it stops. That, that seems to be the most sensible approach of what to do with yeah. a two-ton chunk of metal death trap <laughs> is make it stop if you're not touching it. But no, we're going to make it glide. <laughs> we're just going to have it just coast off into the distance, even if you're not in control of it. We're just going to let it roll away like a supermarket trolley until it bangs into something or squashes someone. <laughs> it's madness when you think about it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it was but, horrible. You know, that's what we're used to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Will, thank you. Thank you very much for being on. I think uh, it was a great, great discussion. Uh, we've went all over the place a little bit, but I think it's a, uh, we, we, we made fault, our point. <laughs> no, no worries. Uh, but I think it's interesting. Europe is developing a interesting, it's an it's interesting market also with the Chinese competitor. It's a little bit overblown, I think. Also the sales of the BYD seal, um, for example, BYD in general, aren't as, they didn't take over as fast as people thought because sales are down now. But the mm. more, uh, the Tesla sales kind of are sta more stabilized. Of course, they are also kind of down in Germany a little bit, but still Model Y is very popular uh, car uh, to buy. And yeah, so mm. so I think it's an interesting market as well. And um, yeah, so maybe you have some closing words for this episode to to ask the audience something or or what you're working on course i'm gonna plug your channel all the way here uh, through the episode <laughs> i think you're doing a great job but uh, yeah maybe you have a thought to the audience and um no no thoughts at all <laughs> <laughs> perfect no i just want to say thanks thanks to you it's a pleasure being here especially I, I have watched a lot of your episodes where you've interviewed like uh you know really intelligent people so it's really weird when you, <laughs> when you wanted me on it's quite shocked <laughs> um whoa what's yeah, happening? I, I, I just, <laughs> it's just quite a surprise isn't it um but yeah, I love what you're doing too. It's, it's, you know, we've got a totally different approach to YouTube, haven't we? I'm just, you know, putting these weird little videos together and just, you know, putting my thoughts down on, you know, in a script and sort of going off on one <laughs> and uh, getting a bit emotional as well. And uh, you're actually out there in the world speaking to people that that sort of matter to listen to their opinions. So <laughs> <laughs> it's great. So uh, yeah, just, I'm really, I'm really happy to be a little part of um, the Tesla community and, and certainly being in the UK there's sort of uh you know there's there's such a lot going on in, in the electrification world and yeah you know, i've been part of um you know the tesla owners club for years and i've been going to all the fully charged events which is now called everything electric so i'll be i'll probably be at all of those events this year i think there's there's three of them going on um and it's supercharged as well one of uh, the tesla club uk events um and it's just lovely. I mean, all the people I meet that are in the um, electric world, so not even just Teslas, but you know, all the people that are fully charged, it's just, they're just a great bunch of people. They just seem to be, you know, nice, forward thinking, <laughs> just logical people. Um, so it's, <laughs> it's, I don't know, it's just, it's lovely to be a part of it. And um, growing my uh, little channel into what it's become today is a, is a, you know, a constant surprise that it's it's going so well <laughs> and, uh, yeah. but what's really nice is it is you know i've got a community of, of people on my youtube channel now that that yeah you know, we're in communication i've got patreon supporters that are just helping me out trying to you know make it make a little bit of money just to, it would be yeah. really nice if all the uh sort of um you know 14 hour days that i'm putting into making videos actually turns out to be financially viable someday that would be yeah. great uh, yeah. so that's my sort of uh, also, my sort of goal but yeah, uh, yeah. I've heard, yeah, I just want to thank you for having me. It's been uh, been a pleasure talking to you, and I hope you can make some sense of it. And you know, if you're going to pass this to your editor, yeah. good luck. 
<laughs> yeah, no, no. I, I think um, you you've made great points, and also and really appreciate your content as well. I think it's super underrated. Um, um, you're doing a great job also with the scripts. I think you have this humor that's also mixed in that I really like. So please, everybody, check him out. Of course, so he's a Tesla jigsaw. So um, check out his channel. And I think for my audience, uh, maybe a question for the end here is: uh, What do you think about the European market? Was it smart of Tesla coming here, for example? It's, that's a thing to imagine uh, or that I want to hear from you guys. And also, if you have a question to Will or to me about the topics we talked about, please write them down below. So, um, yeah, we, we will be answering them. We'll, we'll come over to the comment section and you have to be there and answer. Uh, I'll be there. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we can discuss because cool. that's also, I, I agree with you, that's the, the main thing, um, having a channel is to have a small community where we can discuss these things because I'm a huge nerd in the space and I really hope that people prove me wrong when I when I talk BS and uh, I, I really want to go into discussion because I think it's very super interesting to see those tight shifts now and yeah so that's yeah. my I, abs I absolutely to... I love being sort of you know proved wrong in the comment section or something and, you know if I'm getting something wrong I want to know about it you know so that we yeah. can all correct course can't we for, for the future but uh, yeah Anyway, I shall leave it yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, right. Bill, for being on. And there's only Thanks, one last thing to say here, and that's goodbye, everybody. Bye. Wasn't this episode awesome? Let's accelerate the pace of innovation by subscribing to Tesla FX. It is my absolute favorite channel on the whole interwebs.